solenoid actuator pores. Solenoid actuator consists of a coil enclosed by the core and a movable part, a plunger. The coil is represented by its cross section with a current density specified, and both the plunger and the core are made of the same steel material with the nonlinear properties. You see the BH curve here. My task is to find the force acting on the plunger as a function of the plunger position. OK, let's start with field now. In quick field, I create new problem. Actuator. Next. Problem type is magnetostatics. Every simulated device is a three-dimensional object, but the actuator features a rotational symmetry, so the model class is axisymmetric. Length units are centimeters. Finish. On the left you can see the problem pane, and on the right is the geometry model editor window. In axisymmetric problems, the axis of rotation is a horizontal one, and I should draw only the upper half of the cross section in the model. First, I will insert a rectangle with the dimensions. 24 by 8 centimeters. The rectangle will be located 4 centimeters above the horizontal axis. Insert. Next, I will insert another rectangle with a dimension 16 by 4 centimeters. Again, located 4 centimeters above the axis and shifted 4 centimeters to the right. Insert. This would be the coil cross section and this is the Cross section. And I'm going to insert another rectangle with the dimensions 6 by 4 centimeters placed on the axis of rotation. Insert. Close. Now the core is ready. Switch to select objects mode, click to select and remove this edge and remove this vertex. Next, I'm going to insert a plunger. There is an A gap of 1 mm between the plunger and the core. So I will select these edges, right click, move selection, displacement by 0.1 cm up. Now insert a rectangle with the dimensions 20 by 4 cm located on the axis of rotation and shifted to the right by 7 centimeters. Insert. This would be a plunger. Close. In fact, the magnetic field is distributed not only in these parts, but also in the air outside. I'm going to draw the air block boundary. Switch to insert mode, draw the line on the axis of rotation, change the line type to half arc, and draw the A block boundary. Now let's assign labels. Through labels you can explain the geometric object's meaning and provide material properties. Switch to select objects mode, click an object to select, and type in the label name. This is air. Click here, this is core. Click here, this is a plunger. Click here, this is a coil. And I should assign labels to the boundaries. We field automatically assigns proper boundary condition on the axis of rotation, so I have only to assign label to the arc external. Now let's provide physical properties for these labels. Double click the label name in the tree. Magnetic permeability of the air is 1. Magnetic permeability of the core is a nonlinear function, so I should provide the BH curve data. Here is the file. And the dependency, I will simply copy this data 
and paste it here. Close. Okay. The plunger is made of the same steel material. So I will use the same beach curve data here. Close. Okay. The coil is made of copper with the permeability of 1. And the coil current density is 1 ampere per millimeter squared. I should convert to ampere per meter squared. So it is times 10 to the power of 6 amperes per meter squared. Okay. Far away from the actuator, the magnetic field fades to zero. So at the external boundary, I specify zero magnetic potential. Now the geometry model is ready. Before I can solve the problem, I should build the finite element mesh. Just press this button and the mesh will be generated. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the magnetic field lines. Let's zoom in. Here the lines look broken. That's because of insufficient mesh quality. Let's solve and refine to get more accurate results. Okay. You see the mesh was automatically adjusted. Now let's zoom in. Well, the lines are still looks broken. Let's manually adjust the mesh settings. Click the vertex and specify the manual spacing value. Let it be 0.5 centimeters. And here 0.5. Now the mesh is much denser in these points. Save all problem files. Solve the problem. Open the results. Now the field lines looks like a smooth curves, which is physically correct. You can adjust the field picture and switch on the color map of the flux density and the vector plot of the magnetic flux. Now you see both the magnetic flux magnitude and the magnetic flux direction. And the correspondence between the colors and the numbers you can see in the legend. Let's calculate the force acting on the plunger. I'm going to use the contour tool. Click to select the plunger, follow to the integrals, and this is the mechanical force. The force is directed to the left. The plunger is pulled inside the actuator. This force is calculated for some specific plunger position. What should I do to calculate the force for other plunger position? I should open and modify the geometry model. Right click, move selection, displacement to the right by one centimeter. Build the fine element mesh, save all problem files, and solve the problem. Open the results, use the contour tool, click to select the plunger, integrals. In previous case, the mechanical force was about 1130. Now the mechanical force is only 400. And I can repeat these steps and calculate the force for other positions of the plunger. But there is a way to automate the repetitive tasks. I am going to use the Label Mover tool. Label Mover can move labeled objects and calculate integrals for labeled objects. To be able to calculate the distance between the plunger and the core, I will add a label to this edge distance. You see the question mark here, this label is so far undefined. Double click. There are no physical properties that I should specify here, so I click OK. And you see the zero mark. This mark indicates that this label is empty. There is no physical data associated with this label, and this label doesn't affect the results. OK. 
Now save all problem files and return back to label mirror. In label mirror I should specify the base problem. This is our actuator problem. Then I should specify the values to measure. Add values. I'm going to measure the length of the edge distance. And I'm going to measure the force acting on the plunger. Close. Next, I should specify what will be changed in our problem. Steps, record steps. I'm going to move the plunger to the left by 0 0.2 centimeters. Add step. Close. And I'm going to repeat this step while possible, till the plunger hits the core. OK. I have the base problem, I have specified the values to measure, and I have specified the steps. Now I can get the results. You see, a set of problems is generated. In each problem, the plunger is moved to the left. And when the problems will be solved, the force and the distance between the plunger and the core will be calculated and stored here in the table. So 10 problems were generated. On a multi-core process, a label memory may start solving several problems simultaneously. My computer processor has 8 cores, so 8 problems will be simulated simultaneously. This is much faster than simulating problems in series. And here you can see the simulation results are stored in table. Now all problems are simulated and you can see the results in the table. You can see the results on the plot, control length and the mechanical force X component. When the plunger is extended far away, the force is small, and when the plunger is moved inside, the force magnitude increases. If you search for the solenoid actuator force on our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section. Take a look at the resulting pictures and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any QuickField edition, including QuickField Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.